I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I tell you what, we've had the techiest week, I believe. I don't know, since, since I don't know when. It's been very techy for me. <laughs> I hope it has for you, too. Because everyone should enjoy their tech. By the way, speaking of tech, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. And all the great netcasts and podcasts and audio and visual and other things that are out there on the Tech Podcast Network. Great things are coming from TPN. I'm telling you, stay tuned. Yes. So anyway, we got a lot of stuff this week. I just got out of class for VMware, uh, VMware View, and VMware ThinApp, and all things VDI. VDI, of course, being virtual desktop infrastructure. And I went down to Atlanta with some of my peeps, <laughs> you know, fellow coworker dudes. We all went down there and we geeked out on the, all the techiness that is VMware VDI infrastructure. That's redundant. VDI infrastructure. Virtual desktop infrastructure infrastructure. Well, anyway, you get the picture. <laughs> so, but we had, we had fun. Now it was work, I must admit, because the class was one of those fast track intensive 10 hours a day. And our instructor didn't say, oh, the class is 10 hours a day, but we'll keep it down to eight. No, it was eight o'clock in the morning all the way through until 6 that evening and it was intense yes but it was highly geeky yes and there were a lot of things going on so when i got back to the hotel what are you going to do in a hotel you know what i'm saying it was just there so there was a lot of um well <laughs> there's a whole long story about the wi-fi situation first night i had to pay for wi-fi then i figured it out there was a guy who had the inside track to get the secret password that they weren't giving out to get Wi-Fi for free. So, I managed to get on Wi-Fi. Once I did, first night, like I said, I had to pay for it. Dude, $9.95 for one day of Wi-Fi? Uh, I mean, I felt like the guy with the little cup, you know, going, few bits of Wi-Fi for me, please? <laughs> Anyway, so, but I got on Wi-Fi, and that allowed me to blog. And the blog is full of blogginess. Because the blog, of course, being Dr. Bill, D-R-B-I-L-L dot C-C, as I put here, for computer curmudgeon. Yes. Saying. So, first item. First item is Mass Effect 3. Brand new game. Mass Effect 3 can't import completed save game files from the cloud. Dude. Now, in the article here, uh, it has some workarounds. Now, what's interesting about the workarounds is that it says solution to scenario 1 is this, solution to scenario 2 is this, and they're exactly the same solution. I didn't write this article. I just connected to it. So, what do I know? Anyway... It tells you how to get around the whole issue of the fact that it can't import completed saved games from the cloud. Yes. You know I'm all about the cloud. I like the cloud. Me and the cloud were tight. Yes. Whoa! Ah. Yes, I know it's early in the netcast, but the Geek Song of the Week just can't wait. It jumped in here early. <sighs> anyway. Geek Software of the Week this week is SoThink. Interesting company name, SoThink. It's actually, I think, maybe Chinese. Yes. I can tell from some of their Changlish. 
if you want to call it that, on their website. But this is a great company. I've, I've gotten some of their stuff uh, over the years, and really, they are great folks. So I appreciate the folks at SoThink. And they have a free video converter. <laughs> now, I know, I know some of you are saying, another free video converter, Dr. Bill? What is up with you and the video converters? Well, the problem is when you do video, like I do video, I am, I'm always wanting to convert back and forth between different formats. Now, I will say this. Since I started using Fedora Linux on my laptop, I just use FFmpeg. Okay? Command line. Command line is where it's at if you're a true geek. Yes. Anyway... So I use that, and I've got a lot of little canned command line tweaky things that I do, and it works well. So that being said, WebM is a format that's hard to transcode into because it's so new. There's not that many video converters that support it. FFmpeg is one, and it works well, and so forth. So I use that, but free software, free video... <laughs> Geek Software of the Week, So Think Free Video Converter. It's a lot of words. I don't know. So, so anyway, it supports WebM with a lot of other formats, including, are you ready? AVI, MP4, FLV, ASF, WMV, which is, of course, Windows Media Video, uh, MKV, MOV, which is QuickTime, MPEG, H.264, RM, which is real media, on and on and on, AUG, WAVE, YouTube, on and on and on, and of course, WebM. Yes. It will convert to WebM. As it says here, HTML5 video converter, convert videos to HTML5 video formats, AUG, MP4, and WebM. Create HTML5 video codes directly for display, no hand code required. I think they meant no hand coding required, but you can see that that's the, the Changlish at work. So anyway, but it's cool stuff, and it's free. Gotta like the free, whoa! What's that? That's a drum roll for, and it's not even geek software. It's a Geek Project drum roll. I didn't know we had a Geek Project drum roll. Sounds exactly the same. Check into that, somebody. Anyway, Geek Project. <laughs> Occasionally, I'll have a Geek Project that I like to put on here just to keep things fresh and you know what I'm saying. Anyway, the Geek Project for this week, although we don't do it every week, it's for this whatever, is... Make your Ubuntu system look like a Mac. Okay. Well, if you have Ubuntu, and you are kind of, you would like to have a Mac, but you don't have the dough, you know what I'm saying? Then you can use this software system to make it look like a Mac, and it will look Mac-like. It won't be a Mac. No. But it'll look Mac-ish. If that's a word. But anyway, this is a tool that's on SourceForge called MacBuntu. Yeah, MacBuntu. And this is what they say about themselves. Mac OS X Transformation Pack. MacBuntu is an open source program designed to transform Linux's appearance and layout into a Mac OS X environment. Although MacBuntu is dedicated to Ubuntu Linux OS, it could be used with other OS uh, systems based on Debian slash GTK. Uh, between you and me, use Ubuntu. Just saying. Make your life easier. You know what I mean? So, I think we're done with the... Whoa! What is this, drum roll week? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> I think I messed up my hair. Which is difficult to do since I got it cut and it's now... Shorter, easier to deal with. I like that in a haircut. I don't like getting haircuts, but I like the result if they didn't whack it up too bad. Anyway, and they did good this time, so. 
Go to Great Clips. <laughs> little free ad for Great Clips. Not Grape Clips. <laughs> that would be purple tweezer cutter things, whatever those are called. Scissors! <laughs> yes. Well, I'm in a weird mood because I'm tired. I drove a long way yesterday coming back from Atlanta. So, anyway, Geek Software of the Week Linux Edition is Bleach Bit. Now, this is not the anime Bleach that the Game Master watches. No. It is Bleach, B-L-E-A-C-H, like you're going to clean it really well. Know what I'm saying? Because here's what, here's the thing, <laughs> as I like to say. Um, I like Sea Cleaner. I'm a big CCleaner fan on the Windows PCs. And so I got to thinking, which is dangerous, <laughs> I got to thinking, you know, there really needs to be a CCleaner for Linux. So I started doing some searching, and guess what? I found, I found BleachBit. BleachBit is, well, let me tell you what they say about themselves. BleachBit quickly frees disk space and tirelessly guards your privacy. Free cache, delete cookies, clear internet history, shred temporary files, delete logs, and discard junk you didn't know was there. Designed for Linux and Windows systems. They have one for both. I still like CCleaner, but anyway, you know, hey. But anyway, for Linux, I, that's why I got it, it was for Linux. It wipes clean 90 applications, including, and then it lists, Firefox, Internet Explorer, obviously on Windows, Adobe Flash, Google Chrome, Opera, Safari, and more. Beyond simply deleting files, Bleach Bit includes advanced features such as shredding files to prevent recovery. It's secure. Yes, wiping free... Disk space to hide traces of files deleted by other applications and vacuuming Firefox to make it faster. Which is a good thing, particularly on Windows. I've noticed that Firefox on Linux is actually quite snappy. Yes. Unlike on Windows where it got so bloated that I quit using it went to Chrome. But on Linux I find myself using Firefox about as much as I use Chrome. Or as it is on Linux Chromium. Yes, not quite the same browser actually. But that's entirely another subject. So, next item here, Code Weavers consolidates all their products into one. This was exciting to me. Because I use Code Weavers Crossover Office on my, I keep pointing to my tablet. I don't use it on my tablet. I use it on my Linux client notebook system, laptop, whatever. I use it there because I run eSword, which by the way, e-sword.net, I'll put that up here, is an awesome Bible that's absolutely free. Cool, but it's for Windows, okay? It's written totally for Windows. However, the eSword guy kind of made a deal with Crossover, or Code Weavers, the company, to have a Crossover office for Sort and there's a special price even 20 I think it's $29.95. Well, here's the thing. I bought that and I run eSort under Linux and it works great. But then when code weeder code weavers, not code weeders, they don't weed code. Well maybe they do, but they don't talk about it. Anyway, code weavers, they combined all their products, you know, the crossover office and the crossover gaming edition and the ultimate super amazing edition, all the features of all their various projects into, or products into one. And, uh, and if you are a current customer, which I am because I just bought, you know, I bought the product probably two months ago ish. So I got the free upgrade to their biggest newest, hottest product. <laughs> and this is what they say. In the absence of our fearless leader, Jeremy White, who is traveling on business today, I am charged with making the happy announcement that we have shipped crossover XI. That would be 11. I'm quick. 
<laughs> for both Mac and Linux. The release of this product marks a major step forward for two reasons. First, we have consolidated and simplified crossover into a single product. The previous Pro standard and bundle distinctions have been consigned to history. Pretty cool. Likewise, we have rolled crossover games into the main product as well. Dude. So if you're a gamer, you're, you're set. Uh, so now there is only a single product crossover. However, customers can chill, stand, blah, blah. They can still choose the price point that works for them. Interesting. So, like, if you want to spend more money, you could, but you can also get the cheaper version. Okay. I mean, hey, that's that's cool. By choosing the length of the, oh, I get it. By choosing the length of the support entitlement. Well, I could have kept reading, and then I had known. I get it. One month, six months, or twelve months. So, makes sense. Never quit reading in the middle of reading an article, or you might go, what? Anyway, here's another thing. <laughs> go to meeting with HD Faces is an awesome way for you to be in a meeting with other people without having to drive. I just got through driving five hours to Atlanta. One way. It was a long drive, and I was in class all week. Then I had to pack everything up, check out of the hotel, get back into the car, and drive another five hours to come home. By the time I got home, I was one tired puppy. So, if you don't want to have to get in your car and drive long distances to go to various meetings, then you can use Go To Meeting with HD Faces and have the whole 16 by 9 aspect ratio thing as well. It's awesome! And with this special offer, you can get 30 days free. As it says here, special bit.ly URL and everything. So do it. You'll be so glad you did. I'm telling you, particularly if you've driven all that way and go, I could have go to meeting it. Man. Anyway, so it's a great deal. Just saying. All right, YouTube adds cool new features to their video player. This is pretty cool stuff. Now, this is a sneak peek that they have here in their YouTube blog where they talk about these things. And uh, you can basically, the cool features include being able to like scan through the timeline of the video with thumbnails. So you can see where you are on the scenes that you're watching. That's cool stuff. I thought it looked really neat. You can also zoom in on long videos. If you're watching a video that's longer than 90 minutes, like one of the gro growing list of movies. See if you speak slowly, your tongue won't trip over itself and fall into a ditch. Anyway. The growing list of movies on YouTube, you'll see an added feature that lets you zoom in on the seat bar one and a half minutes at a time. You can zoom through. The second bar that appears gives you more granularity. Granularity. <laughs> For finding that exact moment that you want in a long video. Cool. So they got some cool new features and I'm telling you, Playing with video as I have been doing of late, I gotta admit that, that players that have neat features, I'm really down with them. They're cool. All right, here's what I want to do now. No, I wait one more item. Next item. <laughs> Almost tricked you, didn't I? Okay, anyway. Is it really an iPad 3? Or is it the iPad HD? Or is it the iSlate? That one I just kind of made up. But anyway, no, they're just calling it the iPad. So if you have an old iPad, it is now no longer even an iPad. It's, it's a relic of history. Okay. And the iPad 2 will remain the iPad 2. We have blessed it and made it an iPad 2 forever. <laughs> That's what Apple says, apparently. Anyway, but the new iPad is just an iPad. It's just bigger and cooler, you know, resolution-wise, and has a hotter processor, and it has, like, a microphone you can talk to your tablet with. 
and stuff. So pretty cool. Still doesn't have, still doesn't have what mine has. See, mine here has a little place where you can put in an SD card and you can hook up various things and it has the stereo speakers and it has all these other things in the ViewSonic G tablet, which is why I like the ViewSonic G tablet. And it's cheap. Dude, we're talking like a third of the cost of the new iPad. But the resolution of the screen, okay, I'm kind of down with that. They also announced a new Apple TV with true 1080p resolution. Cool. So, things are coming along in the, you know, handheld world. So, just say it now. I went ahead, I was going to do this before that item, and I thought, well, I'm, I'm really not doing much with the iPad article, so I'll just go ahead and do that, and then I'll move on, you know. So, last week I said we might do a Windows 8 how to install under VirtualBox thing. And so, here it is now. Okay, what you want to do is boot your PC into the BIOS by hitting F2 in my case. It may vary on your system. Your mileage may vary. Then go to the, in my system, you'll have to search for it, but in my system, you go to the, believe it or not, security tab. And uh, I'll go over there here in just a second. Security. And now we'll go down to Intel Virtualization Technology. And you notice I already have it enabled. But if I were to click it here, you'll notice I can disable or I can enable. Of course, what you want to do is you want to enable it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and exit and not save. But you would save it at this point and reboot your system. All right, we're clicking on New here within VirtualBox. And we'll click the proverbial Next. Now, if you notice, if you try to go to version, you're not going to find a Windows 8. Okay, that makes sense. It's brand spank new. It's not even out yet. So you're not going to find a Windows 8. You'll just have to proceed normally. Now, you notice your next is grayed out, and there is no Windows 8. So what do you do now? Well, of course, you type the name in, silly. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to type in Windows and uh, 8. How's that? It's just not very creative, is it? All right, now here's what you want to do. You want to be sure that you've got at least 2 gig, which is 2048 meg. Click Next. Then you want to create a new virtual hard drive for it. So let's click Next. And just go ahead and accept the default of the VirtualBox disk image and with it dynamically allocated. That way you won't waste space. Okay, so now we're going to uh, create the disk. We'll hit create to do that. And now it will have created the disk. We can go in and take a look at a few settings. So let's click settings. And we'll go in here. And notice we have operating system of Windows 8. We've got the system ready to roll. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go ahead and move the hard drive and CD-ROM boots up by moving the floppy down. We don't need the boot from floppy. And so we've got it set up right for boot order. Now display video memory, you know, more would be better, but we're going to leave it alone. And pretty much going to leave the rest of the settings alone. So let's go ahead and OK that. We're ready to roll, so let's start. Yes, I know, I'm, I'm a little thing, but let's go to the first run wizard and choose the location of the ISO that we downloaded from the Windows site, the Windows 8 Consumer Preview. That's hard to say. Consumer Preview 32-bit edition. So let's open it. There it is. We click Next. And when we start, it will actually boot off the ISO. Now my screen is going to go a little wonky here, so I'm going to Okay, that and move the screen around a little bit so that you'll be able to see it in the 16 by 9 aspect ratio of my netcast format. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't support mouse integration. Fine. Okay, so Windows 8. There's your startup screen. I'm still not happy with the with the placement here, so I'm gonna adjust that. But anyway, 
install now of course now of course we have a nice blue screen of nothingness while it's thinking and we need to add the product key now it says to look on the box well actually there is no box we downloaded that off the web so I have it in Dropbox I want to bring up Dropbox open it and look through my Dropbox until I find the win 8 key there we go open it up and there's my key the product key and I'll cut it copy it there yes and we'll paste it in the th thing uh wait I can't paste it won't let me paste what's up with that <sighs> okay well I'll tell you what I'm gonna do <laughs> I'll paste it into a notepad and then I'll set it up here where I can type it. I'll just take it off screen. There we go. I don't think it's a special secret number since it's a preview edition anyway. But anyway, I don't care. They sent it to me for the demo, so I'm going to use it. All right, so we're going to type it in, which is hard to do. Have you noticed that typing in these things can be frustrating and difficult? But you got to so you got to so we'll type it in here do 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 okay uh -huh. now here's what I like to do when I finish typing it in I like to go back and check it make sure yes that it lines up mm-hmm that's correct okay looks good let's click next well, it took it. I must have typed it right. Okay, we'll accept the terms, which of course we never read. <laughs> We're going to do an install Windows only because we don't have anything to upgrade. We're going to use the 20 gig drive that we created. And now it's going to copy Windows files from the ISO file into a virtual machine. <laughs> this is all quite virtual. So what I'm going to do now is actually cut to the chase here because there's no reason to you know bore you with watching the thing increment from three percent to four percent to five percent okay now we're to 95 percent that's yeah, 96 that's pretty good we'll come back at this point and I'll kind of ramble on here while we're waiting for it to finish out the next few percentage points while we're expanding these Windows files. <sighs> you know, I guess I could have waited a little bit longer. 97. Come on. <laughs> we're getting bored, machine. <laughs> That's the great thing about these screens. You sit there and look at them and think, I could be doing so many other things with my life than watching these numbers increment. <laughs> but anyway, we're up to 98%. Let's party. Party, party. Nah, never mind. And we're waiting. Yes, 99. 99. She was on Get Smart. But I digress. And finally, 100%. Hooray. Now we're installing features. And, you know, the features of Windows 8 are different than anything we've seen before so maybe this will take a while too maybe I should cut through to the chase on this well no now we're installing updates so we'll wait on that and now we're waiting for the we're almost done installing Windows <laughs> yeah okay we're gonna restart the virtual machine here in five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> yeah, no. Mouse support, fine. The ISO is still connected, so it's going to say if you press any key, it'll boot, so we won't press any keys. And now we see the beta fish. Yes, I call it the beta fish because this is the beta version. And once again, the screen has gone a little wonky, so I'm going to try to straighten that up get rid of all these various screens and it's 
setting some things up and updating the registry and I'm still going to try to get this screen where we can at least see what we're doing. It's going to be a little compressed here because that's just the nature of trying to do a video, you know what I'm saying? And there's our beta fish back. The beta fish. At least it's not one you put in your ear so you can understand what people are talking about, like on Hitchhikers. He actually looks slightly bored, I imagine, because it takes a while to load all this. Particularly in a virtual machine, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, uh, let's just kind of see if there's anything. Oh, look, there's there's some text down there. Let's pull. <gasps> Getting devices ready. 65%, 72%, 79%. 83%. We're moving along. 100%. <sighs> kind of hard to keep this exciting. You know what I'm saying? I could cut ahead again, but I think we're getting really truly ready to launch. So I'll wait. Getting the system ready. Uh, and now it's going to restart again. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. And we wait and go through this whole rearranging the screen again. Hmm. Alright. There's our beta fish. And I'm going to try to get the screen adjusted to where we can... Yeah, 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 okay. Or we can see what's going on. Bear with me here a moment. Still kind of trying to adjust. That's better. Okay. Alright. I think that will... That will kind of do, okay? Now we'll just wait for it to come up. There's the lovely beta fish again. We're preparing. And we're almost there and... Oh, yeah, we gotta name it. Let's name it something really original. Um, hmm. How about V? Box Win 8. Yeah. Original. Okay. Uh, we'll just use Express Settings because I'm getting tired of not being Express. <laughs> we'll type in my email address. And of course, we'll click the old Next. You feel like you spend your life clicking Next. <laughs> Sometimes I do. Seems like that's all you do when you install things. But anyway, and of course, please wait. <laughs> I'm tired of waiting. I don't care how polite you are. <sighs> well, you know, it is a beta. What can I say? And actually, I mean, this has been, you know, except for rearranging the screen and a few other things, it's been fairly painless. So I guess I shouldn't complain. But you know, when you're doing a video, you kind of get, I don't know, kind of antsy. You know what I'm saying? Because you know you got people out there going, what in the world is he doing now? <laughs> uh, anyway. So now we type in our Windows Live Services password, which is a super secret, amazingly complex password. Yes. Now I'm, now I'm not going to fill all the rest of this out. Let's see what the secret question list looks like. Yeah, pretty much your typical list. I want to pick something really useless here. Historical person, and let's pick one. Oh, sure, Ben Franklin, why not? Yes. Sounds good. And there you go. Creating your account. 
Now it's kind of weird to think about the fact that this is creating a profile in the cloud on SkyDrive, Microsoft's cloud world. So literally your information and settings are being stored in your Windows Live slash SkyDrive account. You know, you got to wonder about that. Now, of course, since I just installed it, I don't have anything customized, so normally I'd put my really strange picture of myself there with my tongue sticking out or something. Uh, <laughs> but we're in the we're in the beginning moments of the first Windows 8 installation that I've done, so obviously my strange customizations aren't there yet. It's obviously setting up tons of stuff in the background, which is why it's keeping us waiting again. I don't know why I'm getting so impatient doing the demo. I mean, you know, you don't have anything better to do? I don't either. We'll just wait. <laughs> I guess that's part of it is I know there are people out there going, uh, you know, Doc, you could have cut all this out. There's our screen! There's the little beta fish down in the corner. We got a calendar. We got people. We got a pinball game. <laughs> Let's play the pinball game. <laughs> okay, it's thinking about it. And we have a blank screen with a ratings thing coming up. You know, I'm not sure it's way worth waiting <laughs> on the pinball game. <laughs> so... Yeah, Microsoft Studios. Hooray. <sighs> Tell you what. I'm going to move on. I believe. Maybe the game will continue to come up in the background. But in the meantime, I'm going to go down and try to find... Oh, there's the charms. Good old charms. Let's go back to start. There's the old... Windows Metro interface, actually not old, it's new. <laughs> calendar? Hello, Calendar. Yes, well, apparently it's not going to do anything. Let me go back down to the lower corner again. It didn't like the calendar, so let's go let's go to the desktop. And Internet Explorer instead of the Start button, you notice. And there we go. Oh, good. A guy with a beer gut. Just what we want to see. <laughs> All right. There's Bing. <laughs> and we have a Bing bird. Uh-huh. Well, we've got... MSN on one screen and uh, other than that nothing terribly exciting so let me show you something else that is kind of exciting at least to me and that is if you click here on the taskbar and click task manager looks kind of boring until you go to more details and dude, you do really have more details. You have processes that are running. You can click on performance and check out how your CPU utilization, memory, disk, operations, how your internet is working. I mean, this is this is pretty cool stuff. I gotta admit, I like this part. Um, lots of good information. As time goes by, you get a nice graph there. Your app history of what you've been running, startup, users, details services that are running it's pretty neat but I tell you I'm really liking this performance thing with the um, graph there and so forth it's pretty neat all right well, I'll tell you what let's do we'll close out Internet Explorer back to the desktop and uh, if you notice you can go in here and personalize I mean this really looks very much Windows 70 at this point we'll put up a nature motif yeah, you know, with my Irish background being a Bailey, that looks kind of cool. I like that. We'll keep it. <laughs> Alrighty. So we got Windows Explorer. We got Internet Explorer. And um, 
if you if you go to the corner here you'll bring up the actual start button which is acting rather annoying at the moment let's try that again start button start thank you there you go so here you have the uh, metro interface again and of course if you slide over here uh, to the very corner you'll get your charms up yeah look at charms <laughs> But anyway, you can do various things. Check out devices. Let me go check and see what we've got here. I'll have to slide up. Oh, Windows uh, 8 can't start any devices. Yeah, it, it is a beta. You know, what can I say? Let's go into the new Microsoft Store. Ah, okay. We've got winners to the first apps contest. People are already creating apps. I like the fact there's a Kindle app already. Let's look at top paid apps. Oh, we can't find any apps in this category. Um, okay, well, I'd have thought they'd have had a few out there. So maybe they'll uh, maybe they'll add some here in the future. But uh, pretty cool, pretty cool thing here with Windows 8. What I suggest is you install it, play with it, and enjoy being the first installation of Windows 8. Alrighty, well, let's see. We'll go back to the store here. Uh, we'll go to top free. I'm bound to have something in free, you would think. Somebody's put something out there. And do, 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 do. Again, you feel like you spend most, most of your time waiting. Are they going to have anything in free? Well, okay, let's go back home. So there you go. Windows 8. Install it. Play with it. Enjoy it. See? I tell you I'm going to do something, and then I do it. Just saying. So there you go. That's how to install Windows 8 on your virtual box. Yes. Okay. Next item. Chrome has finally been hacked, but it is now safe again. Yes, actually, uh, what happened here is that Google wanted folks to try to hack Chrome so they could keep hardening it, you know, more, making it more and more and more secure. And finally, they had to offer a million bucks. But finally, this guy, Sergey Glaznov, is the first person to have successfully hacked the Google Chrome browser. Way to go, Sergey. So anyway, they plugged the hole within 24 hours. Good on Google. But anyway, this Russian hacker pocketed $60,000 by exploiting a previously unknown critical vulnerability in Google Chrome. Company developers released an update removing the security threat. So it's still the most secure browser. It's just that the way you make it the most secure browser is by going in and having these guys try to hack it, but doing it in a controlled way. <laughs> yes. So that you pay them big bucks. Now, the million was the whole contest was a total of a million, I believe. But he got 60000 Not bad for, you know, a couple hours hacking. Pretty good. I mean, that's, that's a pretty good rate, if you think about it. Anyway. Next and last item for this week. Dropbox redesigns the Dropbox website interface to files. And they, um, they redesigned it, and it's very much more graphically. You can see what the little, like, image files are, and it has more information, and you can drill down into things. It's pretty cool. And I tell you, I'm a big Dropbox fan, I must say. Plus, here's something else I did that... I don't have any like demo on or anything, but it was really cool. And that is on my, I point to the other room there where my Linux laptop is. On my Linux laptop, I installed Crash Plan for Linux. I have a Crash Plan account where I back up all my files into the cloud. And I thought, you know, I need this for my Linux box. I wonder if they got a Linux version. I didn't even know if they did. I hadn't checked. And I went, look, Matt, they do. And so I installed it, and now my Linux laptop is being backed up into the cloud as well. Which is a good thing, because I had a problem while I was down in Atlanta, and I had 
a hard drive issue. I mean, it wasn't a hard drive. It wasn't a physical hard drive issue, but it got slightly corrupted. So I actually had to go to run level one and then run FS check and clean up the system and then reboot it and everything was okay. But it got me to thinking, I don't want to lose any data on my, on my Linux box. So I added it to crash plan. Yes. So now I'm good. Ha ha. Always back up your data. That's what Picard found out at the end of the movie with where Data threw himself out into space and crashed and blew up. Always back up your data. Okay, a bad joke, but anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> until next time, remember that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.